Yeah. Right, let's listen to this. I want to watch, watch this. So this, just for the stream purposes, this video is from uh, Rilo, who, by the way, is an amazing, amazing YouTuber. If you haven't already, go and sub to him because he always brings out very, very good information about loads of different games. Um, lately, he's been covering uh, Grazo Warfare. He's got a lot of, lot of uh, uh, stuff on there if you're interested in that game. Um, he interviewed one of the devs or the lead dev, uh, which was really cool. And he answered like questions that we wanted to know, and the you know the community and things. So make sure you go sub to him, but also go watch some of his videos as well. Um, so yeah, watch, watch, let's let's watch this then. I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted to make this video. The change in stance on monetization and microtransactions made by Battle State Games a couple days ago left me for the first time feeling confused. By the way, first of all, I didn't know that, that Battlestate Games released their financial reports. I don't know if anyone else did, but apparently they do. I didn't know that. You, you can go access them, I can go access them. I just didn't know. Used and to be completely honest, quite concerned about this game. My biggest feeling was, why? Well, I wanted to find out, and the research that I did... Yeah, it was based in the UK. Oh, okay. Over the last few days led me down paths that confused me and scared me, filled me with optimism, and ultimately left me feeling somewhat jaded, like the veneer on a shining facade had been ripped away, leaving the rusted steel skeleton wiring and insulation laid bare to the elements. These monetization plans are, like all things Tarkov, divisive. If you see no issue with the development choices that Tarkov has made over the last few years or going into the future, <laughs> I'm not setting up to change your mind of that. The day you made me laugh, it says, title reference to the wiggle that killed Tarkov, if you remember that video. You remember that video. The data I found, however, and the conclusions I've drawn from it, leave me for the first time with a feeling that I actually get what is going on with this game. For that reason, while I will present this data I've collected to you first, I highly suggest that you watch through to the end in order to grasp not only what this information means, but why I'm presenting it to you at all. But you knew that, did you, Colin? I didn't. It's important to understand why any of this matters. Since the start of development in 2016, BSG held a firm stance against the monetization models of their contemporaries. We uh, we know that free-to-play developers are constantly inventing new ways to trick people and... What did that say? Did that say... Did they start... Hold on. 2016, BSG held a firm stance against the monetization... Firm stance against microtransactions. Okay. Let's change them. their contemporaries. We uh, we know that free-to-play developers are constantly inventing new ways to trick people and make more money. And we personally do not want to spoil Escape from Dark with this. Every action and statement by the company over the last year also pointed not only to the stability of their funding, but that they were actually closer than ever to being completely finished with Tarkov as a product. That they were fully... That's crazy to me that they think they're nearly finished with Tarkov. I wouldn't... If me personally... Oh, I don't know. I suppose the gameplay and stuff maybe is close to being done, but are you, you going to say it's done when it's riddled with as much cheaters and stuff? Can you really put a put a, a finish stamp on that? I don't know. Fully ...funded and pushing towards a 1.0 release, a reality supported in no small part by the removal of the most expensive limited edition of the game from the online store. To many of us, it felt like we were finally, finally closing in on the finish line. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, in the middle of otherwise innocuous patch notes, Tarkov's first microtransactions. Namely, extra stash lines regardless of game edition, ability to play offline co-op, and faster unlocks of cosmetic clothing. What changed? Here was this claim by the CEO of the company saying, in not so many words, that the game needed more funding. So, like... So... So, just really quickly. When they say they need more funding, is that... Wait, is that taking into account all of the, the, the people that buy the game for, that are cheaters? Or, or maybe that's what he'll explain. But, I don't know, the amount of cheaters that buy extra accounts, surely the to God, you, you're not running out of money. Cheating and Tarkov will never be solved. Uh, well, that's quite sad, really. Where did all the money go? How is BSG spending their money and why? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. And after looking through their financials, the answer was, well, it's honestly easier explained if we just look at it together. Before we do, I need to lay some ground rules for what I'm presenting here. I'm going to be as objective and fact-based as possible. Cheating However, my takeaways from it will be subjective. Why? And you may how? disagree what can with they them. Cheat? Oh, First off, BSG's financials are more limited, like, than a little stuff. weird. 
What did he say then? BSG's takeaways from it will be subjective, and you may disagree with them. First off, BSG's financials are more than a little weird. Weird. Because Battlestate's development studios are operating in St. Petersburg, Russia, they are actually officially based out of what is, as far as I can tell, a WeWork shell office in London. What? what? How does that work? Am I being stupid? Are you allowed to do that? You can have an off. You could have your office based in in a different country, but have have it in London. How? How does that work? That makes no sense. Or does it? Am I being stupid? I don't get that. Why would you do that? Matters is because this is a UK. Anyway, what are the ta what are the ta how much do you get taxed in in lots of countries? Do oh, okay. What well, I'm imagining our tax is a lot higher than Russia though. No, or no, or is it not? Our tax here is like it. Well, I don't know actually. If you've got a company, I don't know what the company tax in. I don't know. That sounds very weird to me. Based company, their financial records are completely publicly available. So I took a look at them. Right off the bat, for the financial year ending January 31st, 2023, Battlestate Games had a turnover or total revenue of 65,608,544 Great British Pounds. 65, 65,608,544 Great British Pounds. Yeah, Russia's one of the most sanctioned companies. Okay, well, still doesn't make sense to me. 65 million revenue in 2023? Oh, sorry, 2022? Of 65,608,544 Great British Pounds. That's 83,911,112 US nearly, dollars. Eight, nearly $84 million. Dollars. At the top of the filing, BSG's primary source of revenue, Escape from Tarkov, added more than 900,000 new paid players. 900,000 new paid players. Wow. Okay. How are they struggling for money? I don't understand. What are you losing money on? In the 2022 year, 900,000. That means on average, those 900,000 players were paying 93 US dollars for their copy of Escape from Tarkov, meaning that there was a good mix of both Edge of Darkness and service similar costs limited lot, edition orders, as well as standard editions. In there. Do they you can take whatever you'd like away from that. But moving on, here's where it gets interesting. The cost of sales in 2022, as in how much Battlestate Games spent to distribute this product, oh, okay, was around 79.5 million US dollars. Wait. Wait a minute. It cost them 79 million dollars to distribute the game? Italian servers do not cost 79 million. What? What else is there? Staff, electricity, anti-cheap promote. 79 million's worth? So they're actually, even though, so even though it's a 63 million revenue, they're so they're losing money. What's that? Uh, 16 million. They're losing 16 million? Dollars. That means that by January 31st, 2023, they had a gross profit and loss of 2.4 million pounds, ending in with operating costs, investments, expenses, and taxes subtracted. <laughs> Yo, Fridrys, how's it going? Million One second, chat. Sorry, chat. My dogs are arguing over the slip pad. How's it going for Judas? Yeah, games lose money all the time. I, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I totally appreciate that, but that that to me seems as though what? How are they? How are they possibly losing money if they've got nine hundred thousand dollars worth of new players in a year? FC twenty four and we every single cent. I am not going anywhere near that game. I've I have put my share of time into that game. And didn't get any 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 fucking satisfaction from it. That's for sure. Thousand three hundred seventy one U S dollars. We can see that their cost of sales were just under their total revenue that year. If we look at twenty twenty one, they didn't even manage that. According to their profit and loss reports, BSG actually ended twenty twenty one with a loss of nine hundred five seven. A lot. How are you losing money? I don't get it. 
I can't figure that out for the life of me. How much are you... How much... Okay, hopefully you tell, it shows you the money what they're spending money on. Because that, to me, makes no sense. I have absolutely no idea how you're losing money. I don't get it. Power apparently is losing a boatload of money. Just keep servers running. How much does servers cost? 724 US dollars. That year, they reported an 88.6 million. Full peak. Playing nine minutes ago. 282,000. Okay. Well, then, can we do EFT active players? That to me then screams that, like, if they're losing 6 million, they've got to be losing what? I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't. It seems weird to me to be losing that much just in servers. Okay. Okay, marketing as well. You've got to include marketing. Totally appreciate that. Okay, I forgot about marketing. Got, not gonna lie, I didn't know they pushed arena as much as they did though. I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea. And also, he's he's probably got to say, but I don't think arena did as much as as well as what they were probably hoping for. Arena flopped. Oh yeah, it, I thought yeah, Arena did flop. I I I know I've only played it once, maybe twice. Was meant to be a more fun-focused, fast-paced way for fans of EFT to get that juicy player versus player action they yearn for. It was also, and this is the point that you should be most focused on, it was also intended to be a beginner's jumping off point to the Tarkov world, bringing in new audiences to the game. A beginner's jump off point? I felt as though I was I've been playing Tarkov for a long time. But I felt like Arena was a lot harder than the normal Tarkov. I don't know about you, Colin, but I did. I felt like I was really bad at Arena. They took grab the COD player base. Two different games. You got somebody who's like religiously playing COD will hate Tarkov probably. The fact that you die instantly, they won't like that. Some people rely on being like tanky. Okay, so in order to market, so how much did it cost? While the actual metrics of the exhibitor floor space at TwitchCon aren't public, we can extrapolate a bit from other conventions. BSG's TwitchCon booth stole the show. A massive custom 40... Holy shit. I didn't know they went to TwitchCon. I had no idea. When was this? I never saw any... This says 2023, the trade group. I did not see any photos or anything of, of this. Did you? I had no idea they went to TwitchCon. ...by 70 or 2,800 square foot monstrosity. A booth at South by Southwest at half that size would cost around $7,200 a day. $7,200 a day for a booth at SXSW. ...mean, and this is being lenient, the arena booth would cost for its size for three days around $43,500. 43 k for a booth for three days. At three days, a booth that size would cost... Why even is GDC? Why is that? I've never heard of GDC before. And they're charging 40k a day? <laughs> what? No, I mean the price of the literal space it takes up on the floor. We don't know if the people working at the booth, the construction, etc. was part of the budget or if that was all BSG's responsibility. We do know that this booth was a completely custom cool. design done by the convention, <laughs> by the way. If we assume a $100 per square foot price point, which would not surprise me at all, at the minimum, we're talking in the $100 to $200,000 Holy shit. This Am I right in saying that then? So they spent all this money potentially on... All these conventions and then fucking talk of arena just went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> you know what it seems like? So I don't know if, if I'm crazy for thinking this. It seems as though whoever's in charge has got all this money and like it feels like a big kid and just bought everything. We've got this money, let's just buy everything. Let's buy the biggest let's buy big booth, all the PCs, let's buy fucking the best fucking shit, man. Let's go let's go. Shoot some guns, drive some tanks. Yeah, baby. We've got all the money. Let's do it. That, that's what it seems like to me. It seems as though they've spent way too much money on shit that wasn't need to be spent on. In my Basically opinion. Basically a drop in the butt expensive. We know some of this stuff can be. Minimum well, 200 We're creeping up on half a million dollars. Holy fucking shit. Potentially half a million on, on, on what? If your game fucking flopped. Big dick. Your game flopped, man. Like, what a waste of fucking money. Holy shit.
Battlestate Games went to four conventions. Four! <laughs> so, you might be thinking, as I definitely was, oh this is God. just marketing. This is what companies do. No. And yes, that is 100%. No way is it. Yeah, they do, but if you're losing money already on servers, etc., what? why are you spending that much money on conventions? What is the point? Percent correct. Made of people. But anyone hasn't played talk of them, by the way. Just to put this out there, go try it for yourself and come back and and have a go and and come and you know let me know what you think. But that arena is fucking trash. It's it's dog awful. It's dog water in my opinion. Players and contract. So here's my concern, and maybe you're picking up where I'm going with this. The fear is that BSG's funding for the completion of Escape from Tarkov as well as the continued development for Arena was secured only by the projected profits earned from Arena's sales boosted by the marketing push over the 2023 year. And I'm concerned that Arena may not have sold as well as they had projected. Mm. For whatever reason, maybe because of controversy... That's a 300, maybe well, does that say 350... <laughs> is that right? Is that still the same now for, for Arena? Three hundred and fifty thousand. Two hundred and seventy seven. Holy shit. No matter how many fireworks you set off, no matter how many oh, tournaments God. you plan, if people look up a game online and the first thing that they see is this game is disappointing, they you some might think guesser. twice about buying it. And if we they could do Geo Guess if you want. Of both games on the successful release of Arena after a large multi million dollar marketing push, well, it's possible that Battlestate is currently in an over leveraged position. They may have made a gamble and missed. Okay, think, so here's where I want to take a pause. Like I said, it's. You know what? I will say that, right? So, for me personally, I genuinely do love Tarkov. As much as I hate it sometimes, like at this point in that, now I, I'm just not enjoying playing it. I actually do admire how much fucking effort and how much the you know how much this this like you know, the team put into this game. You won't find anything like it. There's no game out there that is like talk of, and that to me is in itself beautiful. However, there are a lot of things they do wrong. No game will ever be talk of. We don't. I agree. He personally. I mean, things like clothes, or even if like it sounds really stupid, right? But let's say, like, in your hideout, for me personally, you could just buy stuff for your hideout. You don't have to craft it, but you could buy, like, a fucking a moose head on the wall or, you know, a fucking a cow rug. Do you know what I mean? Or stupid things like that, a, set, a sofa. Stupid things to make it look cool. Do shit like that. Or, like, your, your items of clothing, buy different rigs. Again, but to be honest, Tarkov kind of goes on this yearly hype cycle from excitement, a huge build and expectations to some catalyst bringing everyone down to disillusionment with the game to slowly building that trust back up to a sort of plateau of, yeah, it's Tarkov. And then it happens all over again. Yep. For a at the end of the day, I and I'm sure many people over the last better part of a decade just okay, watched... right. I I'm, I'll just watch the rest and then I'll see what a finished version of this game will look like. I'm sure that Nikita and the rest of the team would like that too. If getting to that point means that we wait a bit longer or that people buy a cosmetic add-on here or there, I guess that's just something I might have to learn to be okay with. Thanks for watching. Right, so my thoughts on this video. Brilliant video, by the way. As I said earlier, if anybody's interested, go check out Rilo's gaming channel. It's amazing. One of the, probably one of the better content creators out there right now um i don't understand i i am very very slow okay but to me it seems a bit crazy that all this money is disappearing i understand obviously it goes into as you mentioned developing is very expensive it seems like to me 50 million is a lot seems a lot to just vanish in my opinion but again i, I don't know um I, this cheater thing by the sounds of thing if we if we were to combat all of the cheating and get rid of all the cheating then it sounds as if EFT would just won't exist anymore. And truthfully, I'd much rather EFT to exist. That's my opinion. I would like, as much as it kills me to say, if that's the case, I'd much rather EFT be around than not around, in my opinion. I think that's quite sad to think that the way this game only progresses and gets better is through because of cheaters. Seems That seems mad to me. But hey-ho, as, as the video said, that is Tarkov. 
So what do we do? How do we come? Uh, what do we do? Do we just we have to just deal with it, right? We genuinely can't do anything else. <laughs>